Put your hand behind your back. It's bulletproof. It's bulletproof. It's bulletproof. Ah, uh, Daniel Pontelio. Daniel Pontelio, that's the cop right there, Mr. Pontelio, NYPD officer. Marcus Conti reporting on a couple of events today. Let's we'll start off with uh, the Eric Gardner case, uh, the cop that choked out Eric Gardner, ultimately killed him on the streets of Staten Island on Bay Street, 201 Bay Street. I uh, choked him out for selling Lucy cigarettes. We'll talk about that guy. What's uh, what's his ultimate fate? A jury, a uh, police, uh, uh, somebody released a released the official statement on what they found in investigating this cop. So we'll look at that. Uh, Trump is banned from the ballot in in uh, in California. You heard a little late to this story, but he's banned. He's not going to be on the ballot. You can't vote for Trump in California. Damn, what else? Uh, we'll talk about Hong Kong. And I got an interesting story about student loans, uh, the cancellation of debt. So let's go back to Eric Gardner. So Eric Gardner was the Lucy salesman that um, allegedly sold Lucy cigarettes on the streets of, uh, on the streets of Staten Island. This is uh, Daniel Pantelio, the cop, the NYPD cop. That's him right there. He's the guy with his hand. He's the guy choking out Eric Gardner. You see him more more clearly here. He's got the chokehold going on, right? So this guy, um, NYPD judge, says Pantelio was quote untruthful about Eric Gardner chokehold case. Now, four years ago, this is a five year old case. Four years ago, the grand jury tried to indict uh, this cop on murder charges, uh, manslaughter for choking out the guy, right? And they were not able to do that. But the the outcome of the the NYPD's pursuit is to get him fired. That's ultimately what they wanted. That's ultimately all they, the, the community could have hoped for in uh, for Daniel Pantelio. Getting him arrested was not going to happen. I mean, my, my, my take on this is that uh, the cop was aggressive the but it, it's standard practice, you know. Eric Eric Garner was given a way out. The cops said, "Get out of here, leave." And he was like, "Nah, man, fuck that shit, man. It's my fucking corner, man. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, police." And he started that shit right. And the cops said, "Okay, well, we're gonna arrest you if you don't, you know. Now you're getting arrested. Now you can't leave, right? <laughs> we we said." We left the door open for you, and now, you, now the door's locked. You can't leave. You're getting arrested, right? So that's what happens, right? That's what the cops did. Now, did they take him down a little rough? Yeah, they did, of course. So, so Daniel Pontelio was untruthful during his interviews with investigators. That's the kiss of death right there. That's the kiss of death. Well, see, what happens is the, the, uh, the judge, the NYPD judge, now passes it on to the commissioner of the police who makes the decision what's going to happen. Once the judge renders the decision, which was fire him, now the chief will have to fire him. So it looks like, it looks like he's going to get fired. It's a very, very damning review of what happened. So um, was untruthful. Pantelli was untruthful uh, during his interviews with investigators after the death of Eric Garner, according to an administrative judge for the NYPD, who blasted the Staten Island's cops' repeated chokehold denials as, quote, implausible and self-serving in a 46-page opinion. So the 46-page opinion has been released. Who cares what exactly it says? Use of a chokehold fell so far short of objective reasonability that this tribunal found it to be reckless, a gross devi- deviation from the standard. So the, the bottom line in the story is that this guy, Pantelio, is going to get fired from the NYPD. And at this time, he probably has a gag order. He's not allowed to talk about the case. So he'll probably be fired. He'll get a, you know, he'll, he'll write a book. And um, he could speak about the case. You know, he'll be able to speak openly about the case. So I, I think that um, 
ultimately, I mean, it's a tragedy whenever somebody dies. The guy that, uh, obviously, obviously the guy selling cigarettes on the corner doesn't de- deserve to die. But nonetheless, you know the rules. The guy, the guy is a, is a, is a predicate criminal. He's, he's on the street all the time doing, doing whatever. Petty larceny, petty crimes, right? But nonetheless, he knew what, he knew what was coming. So, um, so what else? Governor, I missed this story a while ago. So back on uh, July 30th, this is crazy. California governor signs bill requiring Trump release his tax returns to appear on the ballot. <laughs> Here's a little report. Let's listen. California Governor Gavin Newsom on Tuesday signed a bill requiring President Trump to release his tax returns before he can appear on the state's 2020 primary ballot. Under SB 27, called Presidential Tax Transparency and Accountability Act, any candidate running for president or governor of California will be required to file copies of at least five years of their tax returns to the California Secretary of State. Newsom said in a statement, quote, As one of the largest economies in the world and home to one in nine Americans eligible to vote, California has a special responsibility to require this information of presidential and gubernatorial candidates. I mean, that's total bullshit what she just said, that uh, that the reason why is is accountability and all that's bullshit. They just want Trump's they want Trump's tax return so that they could use it as fodder for the election to say, oh, look, he's a, he went bankrupt 12 times. He, he, he's not a billionaire. Oh, they're going to do all that stuff. Right? Now, is Trump going to give up the tax returns? <laughs> is Trump going to fight this at the Supreme Court? Is it, is it con- unconstitutional to require a president to uh, release his tax returns in order to get ballot uh, access? It probably... It probably is is constitutional because the state government, I believe, in ta- in California, voted on it. California governor on Tuesday signed a bill requiring Trump to release his tax returns. We just heard that um, presidential tax transparency and accountability act. A candidate running for president uh, or governor of California will be required to file copies of his tax returns. Does Trump give a shit about California? Does Trump need to win California to win at all? No. Trump doesn't fucking... California is never... Well, it's not going to go red. It's not going to go red now. It's probably never, never going to go red. So, so that's an interesting standoff. But it is, it is wild that California passed a law. Now, if a red state does that, which, of course, they won't because there's no, there's no political interest in stopping Trump. I, but I could see New York doing this. I could see, you know, now the whole the whole uh, West Coast all the way up to Oregon, Washington State. I don't know. I, I I just I fundamentally disagree. If that's all they have is to try to try to smear Trump for his his uh, finances, it's just a it's a losing strategy, Democrats. So here's Hong Kong. Hong Kong, one point seven million people of the seven and a half million are protesting in the street. Look at it. Look at the crowds. Look at the size of the crowds. The umbrella. Umbrella umbrella protests. When millions of people rise up and come together, there's nothing we can accomplish. So millions of people are rising up in Hong Kong. Here we go. Hundreds of thousands turned out for peaceful Hong Kong protest. Well, not according to the protest uh, organizers. They said they got 1.7 million protesters. Hong Kong enjoyed a rare, calm weekend after 10 weeks of civil unrest with no violent clashes reported Sunday. Wow. No violent clashes, finally. Who causes the violent clashes? The people? No. The police. Uh, the police, the riot, they cause it, they instigate it, they cause it to fucking happen. This is 1.7 million protesters turned out onto the street into a sea of umbrellas amid torrential rains. All right, so the umbrellas were actually for rain <laughs> instead of blocking cameras and tear gas and every other, you know, fucking pepper spray. Riot police who have repeatedly clashed with pro-democratic demonstrators kept a low profile. Oh, that's why there's no violence and did not attempt to block the paths of the umbrella-wielding protesters flowing through the Chinese city. 
great. Get out of the way. We, it's our city. That's, that's why there was no violent protest. Whenever the police engage, that's when you're going to get the violence. The police create the violence. When one group of descendants lingered outside a government complex, other protesters, and not police, encouraged them to go home. Ah, so that's the mob. That's the Hong Kong mob. Go home. You go home now. You go home now. <laughs> that's fucking, that's the mob Chinese, right? The uh, uh, Chinese-friendly mob that is opposing the extradition laws in, in Hong Kong, what the people are fighting for. We hope to see you whether, whether the government gives, you, <laughs> gives a response to this peaceful protest, said Michael Lung a 24-year-old who ushered in his fellow demonstrators. If we get a negative response, we can, cannot control the next. Ah. So peaceful protest in Hong Kong breaks out. Peaceful streams of people down the street. Uh, they said 128,000 were in the, in the uh, initial park, but uh, 7.5 7 million people uh, in Hong, Hong Kong people um, uh, so, and 1.7 million people in the street. That's a lot. They tried the bank run, uh, uh last week. It didn't, it, I guess it, they're slowly, people are slowly pulling their money out. But again, China has a three mil, a three trillion dollar surplus. Uh, it's likely that they're never going to allow a bankrupt, uh, bank run to kick in. Here's an interesting story, right? Canceling student debt would hurt economy, <laughs> says, NABE survey shows. The fuck is NABE? Right? Here's a bogus. I just want you. I want to show you this. This is a. This is bogus news. Bloomberg. Bloomberg is the official network of Wall Street. Right? Reporting, canceling economics. Reporting student debt would hurt economy. Really, really. Who says so? Let's read. Canceling America's student debt, as prescribed by Elizabeth Warren. See how you see the stab. Elizabeth Warren, and they also threw Bernie Sanders in there, too, in another article. And other Democratic presidential candidates, the New York Times named Bernie Sanders, would have an adverse effect on the U.S. economy. A survey of business economists showed Monday. 46% of respondents believe, uh, 64, excuse me, 64% of respondents believe forgiving most or all student debt in the country would be a, neg a net negative for the economy according to the National Association of Business Economics. Really now. Americans owe about $1.6 trillion in student loans, a number so staggering some borrowers will die before paying off their loans. Advocates have argued uh, forgiving student loans could, have, could even the playing field for Americans, reducing the wealth gap and providing opportunities for a debt burden, debt burden middle class, such as buying a home. Yes, yes, that's what it will do. It will stimulate the economy from the bottom up, right? Because top-down economics, trickle-down economics doesn't work. You stimulate it from the bottom up. When, when asked about rising, raising the minimum wage, uh, two-thirds said yes. The survey includes respon responses from 226 National Association for Business Economic Members. Wow, only 226 people, and they're basing this bull fucking shit story on it. Let's look. All right, so there's no other facts. There's no evidence. There's nothing. It's just, who are these people? N-A-B-E, National Association for... You see how, how a stupid, a shit association can get a story like this going? Some crap, bullshit, cocksucker uh, organization puts out a garbage piece of research, and then Bloomberg runs with it. Then the New York Times runs with it. The Hill runs with it. They all, all the corporate media runs with the story, smearing it as, oh, see, the experts over there said uh, that uh, canceling student loan would hurt the economy. Right, well, who are these? Who are these fuckers? Chief economist, KPMG, I don't know who that is. Dallas Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. These are the... These are the um, the, the, the kingpins. These are the most important people. So you got a Federal Reserve Bank chair. You've got a uh, group of 30, another financial scumbag, a Wells Fargo executive, a Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, Amazon executive. You see how the establishment lines up to smear 
anything for the people. Canceling student debt is a great idea. It, it frees people up. Uh, health care, universal single-payer health care also frees up the people. Anything that frees up the people, according to these people, because they're the 1%. They want the money to stay in the hands of the 1%. Right? Oxford, Oxford Economics, Intel, Harvard, these are all establishment through and through. McKinsey Group, Edward Jones, Wall Street Firm, Morgan Stanley, National Association of Business... business okay, do we need to see more of that? Uh, so how do you join if you wanted to join? So that, that was based, the report was based on 260, 226 members. But there's actually, of this organization, and this is not just one organization, there's so many, this is the, this is the source of the establishment research. The think tank, they line up against the idea of freeing up students from their debt. Right? The bankers, the bankers don't want it. 226 members are included. So, so student loan debt, uh, we, we need, that, that needs to go, right? So Marcus Conte reporting, Wayne's World. Wayne's World is part of time. Excellent. I forgot I had this hat. So Marcus Conte reporting on some, uh, some of these breaking stories, right? So, you know, fucking Eric Gardner. Uh, it's a shame that the guy died, you know? He, he's definitely... Didn't deserve to die, but he, you know, follow the rules, right? When the police tell you clear out, clear out, man. Find another living. Find something more productive to do than selling loose cigarettes in front of a store that sells loose cigarettes and regular cigarettes. Dude, why are you cutting into the guy's business, right? That's why they told you to get out of there. And right, now you're dead. Right, so fucking... And Trump, I don't know, man. I think that Trump... I think Trump should push back on that story. Right? That's my opinion. I think Trump should should file a case, try to try to make make the Supreme Court rule on that because it seems like there will be a domino effect that all of the blue states are going to try to get uh, Trump off the ballot. That's unprecedented. I mean, now in California, you can't vote for Trump if you, even if you wanted to. He's not going to be on the ballot. That is sick. That is a sick form of election rigging, in my view. And, um, you know, and, and you see how the oligarchy pushes back on, uh, on student loans, people, and, you know, it's sad, right? And uh, fucking, and in Hong Kong, Hong Kong rising. In my view, Hong Kong's rising. When, when 1.7 million people of a potential 7.5 million in the country, that's the equivalent of, if, if, like in America, 330 million people and, and 25% of those rise up. That's a lot of people. That's like 80, 100 million people hitting the streets. That's, and no violence. No violence, right? See, that's powerful, right? If 80 million people in America rose up to, to fight back and push back on the oligarchy, oh, man, could we win. Oh, man, could we win. See, that's the power, right? Instead, we're all divided, right? Fucking, you got, you got the, the MAGA crowd, you know, fighting Antifa, and when you analyze it, they both want the same thing. They both both want to get rid of, rid of corrupt government, right? Then the answer is here. The answer is 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 attack the oligarchy full throat, full throat. Get rid of the bankers. Uh, so Marcus Conte reporting. 